Amanda Bones. And I'm Ashley. And this is How to Talk to Your Friend About Wrestling. Uh, We have an incredibly special episode for you this week. We have our very first guest. And um, I'm just going to use your Instagram handle because I don't know if you want your name out in the world. So her Instagram (laughs) handle is Garbage Pony Art. So I'm just going to call her Garbage Pony the whole time. (laughs) Either way, it doesn't matter. Just to protect, to protect your, to protect protect the business. (laughs) My name's totally not Rachel. (laughs) Her name is Garbage Pony. Get it right, everyone. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) So everybody help us welcome Garbage Pony, aka Rachel, to the party. (laughs) Golf claps. The crowds are mounting. They are. There's a mob, paparazzi. Yes. everything the lady gaga song paparazzi is playing in the background right now absolutely <laughs> so a little backstory um i don't remember how i stumbled upon rachel's instagram but somehow i found it and i was like holy shit this is amazing <laughs> um i wonder if it was I must have gone down like a weird wrestling rabbit hole when I was looking for Christmas presents for Ashley and that's how I found you. Um, And then I was like, this would be the perfect person to create a mashup of some sort because nobody knows this, but I went with a King of the Hill theme for Ashley's Christmas presents this year. It was pretty, (laughs) it was pretty stacked. (laughs) And so I just sent Rachel the, okay, so no, also nobody knows this. Ashley has like a fucking 20 page list of wrestlers she's into you asked that was on you so. I did ask and <laughs> oh. I had to save it in my iPhone under notes because it was such a long list I couldn't remember them all I will say I do have that like screenshot that you had originally sent me <laughs> and this was like us just saying hello do you take commissions yes yes I do and then I'm reading the list and I thought it was like incredibly cute but I really did know right then and there that you had never really watched wrestling <laughs> And so I thought it was really cute that you wrote like John Moxley, Dean Ambrose, but in parentheses wrote, this is the same person, but he's Mox and AEW and Dean and WWE. Like, as in like, don't mess his identity up. This is who he is to her. <laughs> like, okay. Yes. I will those just take my favorites off of this. <laughs> those were Ashley's notes to me. Because yes. so, I- no, because she demanded that he be identified correctly because sometimes I still catch myself being like, look at Dean Ambrose being all filthy. And then <laughs> someone will be like, no, that is not who he is anymore. He's a new man. Or well, I guess the old man that he was before. He's still <laughs> same trailer park, John Moxley, yeah. whoever he is. He's still the same thing. Yeah. 100%. Yes. 100%. But so that was true. definitely like a really enlightened moment to like read that and it was like, yes, I can really just kind of like pick my favorite things from this and come up with something cool. Yes. And hope that you will love it because you're like, what's a wrestling? So <laughs> yeah. That was really nice. Um, I really liked being able to do that painting because not only did I get to do that Stone Cold Bobby Hill painting, after I posted it, a barbecue restaurant in North Carolina was like, okay, I need one too. And I needed to say like, welcome to Slaboratory. Like, so (laughs) I got to do it twice, which was even better that I didn't even like realize I was gonna be able to do something so cool. It's one one of those cool like art moments where you're like, wow, this is my job. Cause sometimes you're just like, "Mm, my art is stupid and this is not a real job. (laughs) But then when you look at like Stone Cold Bobby Hill, you're just like, yeah, this is my job. This is what I do for a living. I didn't know I needed it until I saw it. And I was like, okay, yeah, I know this is everything I've ever needed. I don't need anything else. (laughs) Did you say you hated it until you saw it? No, I said that I didn't know I needed it until I saw it. (laughs) I hated the idea because it lives in my brain. Oh, no, I love it. It worked. It definitely worked. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. And then from there, it just, now we're just all internet friends. Absolutely. As it should be. As it should be. And you know, so, I don't think like Chris Hansen from Dateline NBC would agree with that, but <laughs> um, we're just going to have to go on a limb and say that it's safe to be internet friends for now. Yeah. I mean, so whenever I visit Jacksonville again, we can meet in real life in a heavily crowded area <laughs> to make sure I can that- I offer you cookies, probably <laughs> disappear to go do some laundry. 
You can assume that my father has come out to the kitchen. <laughs> will be a whole thing. There'll be plenty of cameras. So, you know, I have cameras. Really we'll great. Sure. <laughs> to post the live meeting if it ever happens. Yeah, Coke. So get on that sponsorship. Yeah. Sponsor us, Definitely. Coke. Just so you guys know, um, I had posted something on my personal Instagram about like, there's no real addict unless you've met a Diet Coke drinker. And um, I am definitely a Diet Coke drinker. And then Rachel responded and she's a Coke drinker and Ashley has a fucking Coke Zero in her hand. So yeah. Coke needs to get on the bandwagon. <laughs> yes, we are like the Charlie's Angels of every can they offer that's actually worth anything because vanilla Coke, that's an abomination. We're not gonna go there. Yeah, Sometimes mm -hmm. Cherry Coke Zero can make a guest appearance on our sponsorship, but anything else is worthless. Yeah. Any other Coke product. Moving on, we're gonna do a little Q and A moment. Um, I think Ashley, you have the first question. Oh yeah, I forgot that you put initials there. Um, okay, so, uh, who's your favorite wrestler? Well, if we're going by wardrobe, I'm gonna have to say Shawn Michaels. Holy shit! There's like <laughs> other categories other than just like good wrestlers. Uh, no not for me um <laughs> no I think I really try to like put them in different categories in my brain because just because I like Shawn Michaels so much I don't necessarily want to see what he looks like right now <laughs> um that kind of grosses me out <laughs> so um yeah I think Shawn Michaels has to be up there but also Stone Cold also Razor Ramon um kind of don't want to like be invested in someone who even if they are good as a wrestler that they, they're really bad at talking on the microphone mm. that kind of like takes it really away from me I'm just like yes you're super athletic and you're totally out there kicking ass but you cannot ask to like retape a live taping like <laughs> Sid does <laughs> like so yeah I'm just gonna go I'm gonna go with flashy and I'm gonna go with Shawn Michaels also I'll show you my leg of our matching tattoos. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> also with my Stone Cold tattoo. Nice. So those are my top three. Okay. Cool. I don't know. Is it Razor Ramon? I don't know that one. So I'll have to look him up. Oh, well, he's made of cocaine and he's beautiful. <laughs> um, two years ago, there was a River City Wrestling Con here in Jacksonville, Florida. And I was so pumped to meet him because I have a like pinup girl tattoo of him as Razor, but like as a girl dressed in like Razor Ramon stuff. And I wanted to meet him and he was so um, like out of it as in like oh, Frankenstein no. walking around the convention center. Like, Ugh, I need to leave, like very odd. Um, so I kind of just ran up to him and was like, hey, hold my leg for a picture. And he was just <laughs> like, oh okay <laughs> like I am just like the most excited I've ever been and he looks um like he has no soul like he's just dead and oh. dead inside so that's a really good memory but Razor Ramon old Razor Ramon is very uh very worth investing into because I... he is insane <laughs> <laughs> I just googled him um so I've been watching Dark Side of the Ring. So now I know who he is. And he has like a toothpick in his mouth at all times and a toothpick behind his ear, which I kind yeah. of love. <laughs> He's got a pretty dark side. He has a pretty rough documentary life if they're going to put him out there like that. But man, watching Dark Side of the Ring is really hard. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I'll watch one episode. And I'm just like, okay, I can do another one. It's like, how much worse can all of their lives get? seriously early quarantine like those first like few weeks in March I blew through those two seasons and I was like I need a break I need like intense therapy just to get through whatever <laughs> I just saw because that was absolutely insane so rough so rough okay next question I'm gonna skip this one and save it for last so because it makes sense chronologically um, but the next one I have to ask is, do you have a favorite wrestling company? Well, I guess I was already dogging WWE for right now. Um, <laughs> so if I could like build my own company as in like SummerSlam 1997 in your house, 1998, like if I could just kind of cultivate my own favorites from each, 
Um, I can't really like rule out WCW, ECW, or, you know, now that I have AEW in my hometown, I can go do that, you know, every other Wednesday if I want to. So um, I guess I really don't. I just, I pick it by decade. I'll try to like time travel and build my own company <laughs> from my favorite <laughs> pay-per-views instead of just really focusing on one. Because you can't say like TNA is your favorite company. You're going to run out of watchable content if you say that. So That's very true. you really have to <laughs> kind of pick your own from there. Build your own wrestling company. Here are 12 <laughs> episodes. That makes sense. <laughs> There's a, another podcast I listen to called Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. And they always say, you can fantasy book, but you cannot fantasy believe. And I feel that. <laughs> oh, so I can believe. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe. They're still all trash men. They still dress as clowns. Like they, it's just a different era in my own head. And then I'll just kind of like watch different, you know, YouTube channels who cover wrestling reviews or listen to different podcasts. And I'm just like, oh, that's crazy. That's happening right now. Just kidding. I'm going to fall asleep to the network and listen to something from 1998. Because that's what I want it to be sometimes. I've been making my way through really old ECW and I'm like, wow, I'm yeah, having I mean, so much fun, but also, holy shit. This is are all you guys alive? Yeah, it's it's so fun, but scary. That would have been a really fun experience to be a kid for ECW times. Yeah. Like back where you could bring your own instruments that they would use in the ring to beat other people with. So people would just like, I'm going to bring my Sega Genesis so he can throw it over his head. Like, <laughs> what a great like childhood experience if you were that perfect age for that yeah these poor kids now who see wwe and it's like roman reigns like stumbling over how to use a microphone with a bunch of screens behind his head <laughs> these poor things <laughs> it's not the same oh my goodness all right ashley your turn um so what got you into wrestling well, it eventually happened as I was older. I was not a person who grew up with wrestling. Uh, my parents just didn't really take to it. They were into it. Uh, when I was a teenager, I used to hang out at like Wingstop type restaurants a lot. And I would always see like the same group of guys who would go and they would just be so enamored with wrestling that they would be like, honestly, assholes to be in the restaurant, but just being loud, watching it on TV. <laughs> and that's where I heard somebody singing Shawn Michaels theme for the first time and I'm like okay if that guy thinks he's a sexy boy maybe I can read into who this sexy boy is and then as an adult I just got into it further like with my partner and then it was like I have been missing out on the most golden thing that I ever have found because I feel like I have all of the other pop culture components that would really push me into wrestling and then I just never really got to experience it until older so now I have to like time travel to figure out what I like <laughs> but now that I have wrestling it's kind of like what would I do without it yeah that's how I feel okay Ashley I'm gonna let you ask the last one and then I'll ask mine because it makes sense I didn't put these in order so I apologize they're all on a roll um and we kind of already talked about this one um uh, what's your favorite era of wrestling even though you kind of already mentioned it. I guess I'm just going to have to like encompass it with attitude era. And I know that a lot of people want to like argue like, no, have you seen new Japan? Not yet. I'm not there yet. You know? So um, I'm just going to have to pick my attitude era just because it just kind of got to the point where it got so incredibly silly. And then people took it so serious that it just kind of encompasses everything I want out of wrestling as an undertaker coming out to Limp Biscuit on a motorcycle. That is the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen. And what? then people wearing Jinkos, like, I love this. This is my God. And so I think it really just kind of can <laughs> just really holds on to everything that I do like about wrestling. So I'm just going to go attitude era. It's a good okay. one to, to kind of dive into. I can't wait until Amanda gets more into that era too, because it's going to be so fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really where it, it happens. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna google this whole undertaker coming out to Limp Biscuit on a motorcycle because that sounds amazing it's ridiculous it really is like <laughs> it's unreal but you know when you say like if you know of like who Stone Cold is 
if you told me that Stone Cold came out on an ATV and drove it perfectly around a ring and then drove it right back, I would have been like, yes, he's very good at that. But somehow putting Undertaker on a motorcycle with a bandana like he's Brett Michaels, I just, it's so ridiculous. Like, so it's like, how could you look away? It's so perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to do a lot of Googling when we get done here. Yeah. Um, Final question, why this match? Um, well, it kind of has everything you need if you love trash TV. So <laughs> even if you're not a wrestling fan, I think this is the match that you should watch. If someone's like, hey, you've never seen wrestling. You also like Jerry Springer. Why don't you watch this match with me? You'll be sold for life. <laughs> so this is usually the match that I will tell people to watch if they're not a wrestling person at all. Like, this is like, who is Rachel as a person? It's this <laughs> 2005 SummerSlam match. <laughs> this one right here. <laughs> so the match that Rachel chose for this episode is Rey Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero in a ladder match for custody of Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> it sounds like daytime TV. It, okay, so I just, I didn't know the whole like ladder match piece or the fucking custody papers piece until I started watching it. So I'm just like, oh shit, Rey Mysterio popped out of the thing. Who's this kid they're so worried about? And I'm like, what? So did I started freaking out. I was like, is this really Eddie Guerrero's kid? And then why did he end up with Rey Mysterio? This is so confusing. Why does he want him back all of a sudden? And I'm like, what does his wife have to say about this? So many questions immediately out of the gate. So many questions. It's such a perfect example of how they forced an eight-year-old into believing kayfabe, um, <laughs> which is just incredibly awful to go through. But man, some great TV out of it. I hope yeah. Dominic got paid. For his death stare, and for the one moment he comes into the ring to shake the ladder, <laughs> I put down. I was, like, was constantly like cutting to him, yeah. as if he was going to have a reaction. I put that <laughs> down. I was like, "Oh my god!" How many times? Like the gratuitous uh, shots of poor Dominic, just like kind of half smiling, half worried. <laughs> like, oh, poor kid. Well, he's watching his dad get his ass beat for a while there, and I'm like, "God, stop!" And then the social. Is the social worker a real social worker? Is she just an actress? The world may never know. Even worse was like the SmackDown a little bit before this, where it's kind of building up to this big storyline. Eddie Guerrero <laughs> brings out that social worker and his theme is playing. Like, lie, cheat, and steal. I can't imagine playing that theme in like a social worker's office trying to explain to them why I deserve custody of my own children. <laughs> but also, that's bad on Dominic because who would not want Eddie Guerrero as a dad? Yeah. That's some kick ass dad shit right there. <laughs> I don't know. Those <laughs> highlights he was rocking are mm, questionable. Hey, He's definitely thought, all an inspiration for me. I thought he looked like a babe in this one. So, oh, absolutely. <laughs> His fucking neck muscles were terrifying. I was afraid. <laughs> Just like, I'm like, you have no fucking movement in your neck because your muscles are so big. <laughs> he doesn't need to. I always pay attention now to when they call out what the person weighs for some reason. Like, it's become a fascination of mine. So Eddie's billed at 228 pounds and he's fucking ginormous, like a brick wall. And then Ray Mysterio, okay, so Ray Mysterio popped out of fucking nowhere like a jack-in-the-box. <laughs> I was like this is an entrance okay okay um so he pops up out of nowhere he's only 170 pounds he's like my size he's a big I, weigh, he's gonna I, fight. Think, I think I'm taller than Rey Mysterio and I definitely weigh more than he is now and you wear a lot less mass than Rey Mysterio <laughs> yes I mean sometimes I mean if I leave my house I wear a mask but <laughs> well, he wasn't wearing pandemic masks that's true. He wasn't there yet. He wasn't ahead of his time in that way. <laughs> but holy shit, Ray, I didn't realize Ray Mysterio was so small boy. Small boy, for sure. Definite small boy. Um, 
All right, we're just gonna go over the match now because it's so insane. Like it's so insane. Holy shit! <laughs> I thought it was interesting to hear Taz on commentary because I completely forgot he did commentary for WWE for a while. I was like, is that Taz? Why is Taz talking? Yeah. <laughs> they said some fantastic things. The comment. Okay, so I've also become accustomed to p- picking out things happening in the crowd, and also some of the shit the announcers say. There was some fantastic things from the announcers on this particular match one of them being careful with that ladder it is a weapon what (laughs) what and speaking of crowd things i noticed something about this match like when they cut to dominic at the very beginning a guy in the crowd does the like hulk hogan ear wind up thing did you see that like a bald guy is just like oh you need a father you need you have to be a part of a custody battle no, <laughs> I just did this Hulk Hogan arm wind up just to be on camera as Dominic is like crying into the universe. Dominic looks like an ASPCA commercial the entire time that they are filming him. And this guy's like, let me just be a dick and do that Hulk Hogan arm wind up real fast. But yeah, like I always am looking for people in the crowd because also not only is it like fashion inspiration for these older episodes, especially like ECW, there's some really hot looking people. They've always got cool glasses, thick <laughs> hair, the best signs. Like, you can't get away with those signs nowadays. They'll just cut you out. Oh, yeah. Some of, some of the signs are fantastic. <laughs> um, well, I was going to say, in the in a previous match we did, I noticed there was air horns. And I, that, that would never fly now. Well, especially now. But, like, full-on air horns. I know that they got rid of the beach balls, but, like, oh, They should have shocked. never got rid of beach balls. What if one ended up in the ring? <laughs> it happens. Cesaro ripped one in half. Like, Whoa. big boy mad. <laughs> Man. I can't really... Could you rip a beach ball in half? I don't am know. I just, like, thinking how weak I am? Like, because, really, could you rip... I don't know if I could rip a shirt in half like Hulk Hogan does. They're pre-ripped. Are the beach balls pre-ripped, though? Yes, there's... Yes. <laughs> just in case Cesaro yeah. wants to crack open a cold one in the ring. Yeah, everything is pre-ripped in my mind. There's no way. <laughs> pre-ripped like this bud. Yes. Yes. Um, so I love that as everybody's walking in, they all like check out the ladder. <laughs> like oh, I'm gonna like, check this. <laughs> <laughs> like the, every single one of them, so Raven Stereo and Eddie Guerrero, like both of them put their hands on it and kind of like shook it and like we're sizing it up a little bit i'm like it's a fucking ladder guys we check the basketball for a basketball game i guess you just have to check the ball (laughs) (laughs) super silly um is ray mysterio chewing gum that sounds right that sounds right for him i cannot confirm or deny they like feel like probably pan to him and he's just like chomping on something i'm like is this a breath mint are we gum if you're gonna win custody you're about to be minty fresh (laughs) you gotta be on top of your freshness also (laughs) i thought it was really weird to see vicky guerrero being so young and not screaming yet Yes, like that was was a really odd thing for like seeing her now like i met her in person at that wrestling con and her whole booth her whole gig was like pay me 30 bucks to take a picture or a video of me screaming in your ear so like you would be around the convention center and she randomly would just be like wah like megaphone screaming so like seeing her like as an innocent soul that was really like the first kind of time you would like see her on camera so now like looking back at it I'm just like that is not even the same lady that is a whole nother person yeah, I was shocked. So she really was trying to convince Eddie, like, before the match started, like, hey, you don't actually want Dominic. And he was just like, shut your mouth. I'm going to go be trashy. I know what's right. <laughs> I feel like wrestler dudes, um, wrestler dudes just, like, tell their chicks to shut up a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a secret undergoing theme. You know, like they don't really want to portray that as much anymore. But that is like odd watching, like going back and watching like Attitude Era stuff. You're just like, wow, if I didn't have a bathing suit on, they would not put a mic on me. So that's kind of shitty. Yeah. But anyway, the match. Uh, Mysterio. Okay. So Mysterio's from San Diego, which I thought was super rad because I live in San Diego. Um, 
and he's so he's six one nine all over his shit, which is hilarious. And he's in he's in like shiny plastic Jenkos. Oh yes, mm-hmm. he's waterproofed. He's ready for this battle. And you know what? Those custody papers better be waterproof too, because he's gonna get them. He's he needs the blood to just like wick off of him. <laughs> so All that blood and sweat. <laughs> uh eddie guerrero did totally look jacked as fuck what else oh my god there was just so i have ladder written down like 25 times i understand it's a ladder how many ladders i counted two ladders yes at all times uh ray mysterio does a lot of like crazy like swirly volcano hurricane switcheroo flippy things he's really like that was the technical term. If anyone is trying to reference what he does in the ring, swirly hur- hurricane, he's a meteorologist, first and yes. foremost. <laughs> then he is a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the technical terms for these things are. I'm just creating my own. He did an Uno reverse. I saw it and I was like, Uno reverse. <laughs> Pulled the card out. <laughs> <laughs> he slams it on the thing. It's my turn. Yeah. Uh, also oh fuck man every time they got on the ladders i was terrified like they the ladders start to rock a little bit and then was it like eddie tried to do a thing where he was gonna grab ray and like flip him off the ladder but eddie flipped off the ladder and then ray followed behind him shortly that was like a botched move that was a a number one like wrestle botch type move they did not mean to do that eddie kind of falls to the right and then ray totally gets the whole blunt force of falling like this whole match is ridiculous especially like it starts and as soon as it starts they're out of the ring dropping each other on the pavement essentially then they get back into the ring it's just like a whole thing but then like other than the whole trash element of fighting for custody via briefcase in front of a crowd um vicky guerrero really fucked up her cue on this one and the network yes okay so you know spoiler alert towards the end of the match um vicky is supposed to come running out and kind of aid to this um so when they're both at the top of the ladder like the network cuts it out but eddie guerrero is like where the fuck is vicky like (laughs) and even he's like pounding on the ground after they both fall so they both kind of have to like play it off like oh. Eddie does another move on Ray just to kind of like buy time but Eddie Guerrero is like pounding onto the mat and is like where the fuck is Vicky like what was this bitch doing like how did you miss your cue like this like Dominic had his cue he was up there shaking that ladder with his little jinkos and then he gets back like that eight-year-old is more punctual than this screaming lady (laughs) and so but i hate that like the network has cut that out like they just edit it with more crowd noise so it's like you they like pan to him like where are you biggie like pounding on the mat but it's just like like crowd noise like they really tried to cover it up i wonder if there's a way you can find it though I'm sure it's. Oh yeah, I found it on YouTube. Okay. (laughs) There was a point when one of the announcers was like, "Guerrero seems very frustrated," and I'm like, "Well, I didn't know this piece where Vicky had missed her cue." Oh yeah. I'm sure he's frustrated from being thrown off the ladder every time he gets on it. Yeah, that was like, you can see it starting to happen because he's like, fake, like, oh, I can't even undo this briefcase that I'm like. I'm so coked up and jacked right now. I could rip this briefcase like a beach ball. Like I could rip this shit open and own that child. But like the fake, like, oh, what are clasps? What are buttons? I can't do that. So he's kind of like, where is Vicky? Like looking around as he's doing that. And then they have to do the fall. And then that's when he has a little tantrum. And then she comes running out and holds him down. Ray climbs up the ladder. Family court held it up. Unity is restored. <laughs> Everything's put back together. I would love all custody battles to be fought this way. I feel like it would make things much more interesting. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, I would love to go to bat. Like, let's do it. I want to pick my own sport, though. You know, <laughs> like ice skating. Y'all better look out. I'm going to own every child in this area. I'm going to figure eight for every baby in my area. 
<laughs> oh my god if we ice skated for custody <laughs> ice skating for custody come on so i hope you guys don't have a summer custody case because we have no ice rinks available in florida at that point you guys just got to hold off you guys don't have like an inside ice rink <laughs> one inside ice rink one inside easy hockey game this is a matter of family court <laughs> we're gonna put the hockey game on it's gonna be like fucking from wayne's world when they're like car it'll just be custody case everybody's yeah, like, giving us to move <laughs> came back on i was gonna say too um did vicky like push that ladder wrong also because i saw yeah i feel like she like ran out and did not do what she was meant to do just like she was totally like five minutes late and then was just like oh shit i'm just like you know you clock into work late you're kind of like oh how do I tie an apron like how do I get my life back together like yeah she was not a she's not on top of it she had to pick up screaming because what else could she do in that moment but I think I asked this last episode like was she did she practice did she get the chance to practice or was it just like like being on time well not being on time. time not being on time but like the pushing of the ladder like I wouldn't know how to go into a ring and push a ladder appropriately so that nobody gets hurt all right I guess you're being devil's advocate here but if Vanna White showed up to Will <laughs> Fortune and did not know how to press those letters I think she would have been fired mm-hmm. well so, like come on lady do your job custody fucking- custody is on the battle right now <laughs> Vanna <laughs> White doesn't have to press the buttons anymore she just like goes near it and it lights up now in a ball gown in a ball what a job we're out here ice skating for custody we could be having a ball gown on right now (laughs) on the wheel we've really missed our opportunities ladies omg there is a point when they're climbing the ladder sorry i just looked at my notes and i saw this and i started laughing all over again so there's a point (laughs) when they are climbing the ladder ray's climbing the ladder and Eddie is behind him, and Eddie straight up punches Ray Mysterio in the butt. Just so yeah. I'm aware, nobody can hear it, but there's a lot of laughing going on right now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna punch all your buns. I'm gonna punch in your buns right now. I saw it, and I was like, "Did Eddie just punch him in the butt? What's happening?" He's trying to give him like a Charlie horse, so he would just like slide down the ladder. I I wish we could have seen like in real time ass pucker. <laughs> Like the shorts like go up. Like I wish that would have like zoomed in on like no, I'm worried now. Oh Real time custody ass clinching <laughs> on the ladder. Also, Eddie Guerrero takes a bunch of ladder to the face. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oof. Definitely. Oof. There's a really rough like hmm. where, he, where like Ray Mysterio does like a six one nine hurricane tornado parameter weather movement on the ropes Mm -hmm. rough every time but also it's like how can it still blows my mind because that's always been his move to flip around the ropes like that but how can he do that how can anyone do that but then you're like you know strippers can really like maneuver on poles crazily so it does make sense but also because he's small boy yeah small boy that's how he does it it makes it it possible he fits in between the ropes because he's small boy Whereas, like, you wouldn't catch the Undertaker flipping through those ropes because you'd get stuck halfway through Oh, it. my God. Undertaker. <laughs> but nine-foot-tall meatloaf, he's not doing anything like that. <laughs> Absolutely not. He can barely bend in half. No, not at all. He can get dropped on his head in Saudi Arabia, that's for sure. But he definitely cannot bend in half. He has someone put his shoes on for him. Shut like, the fuck up. He's old enough now that someone is putting his shoes on for him you know what i'll take that job i'm not even gonna <laughs> gross i would oh. take that job i'll take it in the 80s undertaker i'll take it for the 90s undertaker 2021 you need your shoes put on call me i'm there all right oh ashley God. who are you putting shoes on what wrestler would you put shoes on like doesn't matter how old doesn't matter if it's for custody or if it's just because <laughs> They are so zonked out on like quaaludes. Like, what wrestler are you putting shoes on for? Oh my god. Um, shit. I know you don't watch New Japan, but I would put Kota Ibushi's shoes on since he just has he's he has no brain anymore. <laughs> oh no. He's a beautiful boy, very dumb boy, but oh well, that's kind of a good combination for boys. He just needs help. Oh. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> 
here I am thinking like, I'm going to put Shawn Michaels shoes on so I can steal those shoes and maybe, you know, switch a little mirror vest in that, in that action. I'm going to steal his outfit. I'm not actually helping. I'm not even being like, oh, you need my help. Nope. I'm gonna steal your clothes. I'm just taking your things clothes. out of the closet one by one. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley's With a pair of slides, I'm taking these boots. <laughs> Ashley's actually going to help the wrestler. I'm just going to stare and drool at the undertaker and Rachel's just taking Shawn Michaels shit. <laughs> right. I have like a comically large, like Mary Poppins bag of like loot that I have stolen from Shawn Michaels. So you can shut up, set up your shrine at home. <laughs> Helga and Arnold in the closet. <laughs> totally. I do have um, shrines. Like I have playgirl pictures of Shawn Michaels behind me right now. <laughs> oh my it's god! Just, you know, surround yourself with things that you love, things that you like so much. Um, another going back to the match for a moment. It was fucking crazy when Rey Mysterio was hanging from the briefcase and drops into Eddie's arm so perfectly so that he can slam him onto the floor. And it's like, also, it even goes to show, like, you can hang from that briefcase, but now I have to believe that Eddie Guerrero can't undo a latch. Yeah. Come on. But, so, I mean, I really, like, it was such a good ending, I guess, to, like, the big buildup of this storyline, because they didn't just really start it for this episode. Like, they were really trying to, like, push it. So it's cool how it ended, but, man, like, if you just, like, really grade the match, it's kind of a botch. Like... Part of it is good and then part of it's just like oh shit but i mean we've all seen maury a lot of girls uh get the results and then they run backstage so it's not like you expect it to be like athletic perfection it was good there were a lot of like rad moments in this match but definitely 100 percent the whole like fighting for custody added a layer for sure oh yeah, yeah. like it I don't think they've done anything else like that. I don't think they could get away with it. And it was such like, for me, I know that like other cool stuff happened on this SummerSlam, but I don't even think about it. It's kind of like the day that OJ Simpson was getting chased by the police was like a monumental day in like sports history. Like all this other stuff was happening in sports history and nobody even knew about it because of this. So it's like, I wouldn't even know about Matt Hardy Edge, the Lita thing that happened earlier. Like you don't even think about it. This is a big Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan moment. Oh. Randy Orton and Undertaker in this episode. Like it was a whole big episode, but nobody cares because there's custody up in that briefcase. Are you really going to worry about Undertaker putting his shoes on and no. trying to dick around <laughs> with Randy Orton? No, there's custody up in that briefcase. That's all you care about now. And Amanda was like, not even, he, Eddie Guerrero didn't even get too many more uh, pay-per-view matches out of that. Because this happened in August, and I think by November he passed away. Yeah, I was going to say it was, yeah. it was definitely like creeping up to when he passed away. So it was weird to see him almost like right before that. It was like, whoa, shit. Like, right. So he's got to be clean at this point then, right? I don't know if anybody's clean making those hair choices. Though. Air quotes. <laughs> uh, me, honey. <laughs> See this? The it's mullet. All for my, it's all for Eddie. I'm it's full all for my Latino my... Oh. <laughs> It's all I'm... for my baby. <laughs> I'm all for a mullet. It's those goddamn 90s highlights that are killing me. I was into it. I liked that. I liked the highlights. I was here well, for it. <laughs> Even if the highlights look kind of trash, you know that they were probably achieved with that weird cap method where you yes. like take a knitting needle to pull out your like weird hair. And then the top of your head looks like those spiky earrings from Claire's that everyone had in seventh grade. Oh my God. So even if you don't appreciate the highlights for what they look like after they were done, just think of his head looking like a penis, like literal <laughs> cum drip penis with that old highlighting method. <laughs> That highlighting method. Eddie, with... we love you, but you have a conduit <laughs> penis head. <laughs> All right, I think this is a perfect segue into 1010 Wood Bang. Oh. Be because we're talking so much shit right now. <laughs> Absolutely. And I would make Dominic watch. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Not eight year old Dominic. Dominic is a man now, and he can accept these things. Uh, 10 out of 10, I've already banged Eddie Guerrero in my life, in my bed. 
everywhere. We're on a subway in my dreams, banging, banging it out. So a million out of 10. And if you say 10 out of 10 that you would bang Undertaker, I'm going to exit this meeting right now. <laughs> I mean, I have totally said that. <laughs> when well, we, we all have to pick. So it's like, I can take Eddie. Someone can have the briefcase. Someone can have Ray. <laughs> I'll take the ladder. Who's going to bed with the briefcase? <laughs> Ashley's going to take the ladder. <laughs> oh, oh I guess somehow ladder. you could turn it into a king thing. There's you know, option. 10 10 would bang Vicky from this era. Oh. Not not now. So, yeah, if you're just going to pick it by era. Just from, yeah. the, from this one match, 10 10 would bang Vicky from this match. So, you're saying that what really gets you hot is people not being punctual. Yes, I'm all That's about a very bad trade. <laughs> and you know that Vicky and Eddie were sharing that goddamn highlighter cap. Yeah, because she has the yeah. same highlights in her Absolutely. hair. Absolutely, that was yeah. a, they they did that together. Mm-hmm. I think that was the hair that I had like in early ninth grade because I was looking at it I was like oh my god I had those exact like chunky highlights but then my mom spent all this money to get my hair done that way and literally two days later I bleached the entire thing. <laughs> So she still, you know, makes me. It was a really rough time because only like in my adulthood did I realize that like blonde hair looks cool with dark roots, you know, like, so we were literally turning ourselves into like Draco Malfoy, just (laughs) like ugly, like washed out, super all over bleach. Like we really could have just like done and then it would have looked fabulous, but we were just like, no, I want to look like a bean. I want to look like a jelly bean and bleach my whole head. Well, I'm like, bad choice for hair. I don't know. Not for the haircut, just for the dye style. Yeah, dye style is always hair. Well, and like, okay, so I am partially Puerto Rican. My hair doesn't bleach that pretty color. It bleaches orange. So like, I just fried my hair to get to yeah. that ugly ass blonde. Oh, my hair was crispy. crispy. Yeah. If it wasn't dyed, it was moosed. <laughs> down to my head oh it was rough it was Amanda rough remembers time. Amanda remembers this but I used to try to uh mohawk my hair with shaving cream oh my god yes <laughs> and I don't know why what grade are we talking like uh, yesterday or like sixth grade ninth grade ninth grade ninth grade we had some fantastic hair choices in high school they were disgusting oh so my 10 10 would be I've decided oh, yeah. to change the ladder to <laughs> that guy that does the whole Hulk Hogan ear Thing. that's my that's my 10 10 well word is he is a real american so there's always that maybe i changed my mind then <laughs> maybe i've changed my mind <laughs> oh my god from the I'll- letter to the hulk hogan ear guy that's his name now hulk hogan ear guy yeah. uh he's not even cute like he definitely looks like he worked at a blockbuster <laughs> not like a type like that's a guy that's a real type not mm-hmm. anymore but for this time period mm-hmm the last blockbuster. The last. So he worked in Bend, Oregon at the last blockbuster. He you can flew now- to Washington, D.C. for the SummerSlam to represent Blockbuster and to do the Hulk Hogan thing because he knew one day Ashley's going to want to bang this. Yeah. <laughs> and that ladder is going to be in the shadows, tears pouring out of its steps. Like, where did I go wrong? I could have had an Ashley. Oh my God. <laughs> quick little reality piece so I was watching the match with Scotty and they the announcers kept saying steel ladder and all this stuff and Scott starts cracking up and I'm like what's so fucking funny and he's like it's not a fucking steel ladder it's aluminum and something else and I was like what it's not steel ladder (laughs) he was like no fool that's just aluminum yeah I mean how heavy would it be if it was a steel which that makes more sense as to why it was like so easily like rockable yeah those things crumble like nothing too like a lot of times they just go boop and they're done so really you could be really dominant in your relationship with that ladder i could maybe i'll that go back to ladder around Mm-mm. chunky highlights go and get them what's the ladder Although... gonna do nothing <laughs> can't do anything <laughs> can't stop me being in a relationship with an aluminum ladder sounds better and better as we continue this conversation. It really does. It seems very safe for, you know, pandemic times. Yeah. Yeah. Heavily cleaned. Easy. 
spray it down. Yes, yeah, spray, spray with some Lysol. We're good. <laughs> Take that thing okay. in. Again. <laughs> okay, so that was our match. Everybody, go watch it. It's it's fucking insane, dude. Like it's the and it just speaks to like how crazy the storylines got for a second in wrestling because that storyline I was blown away as soon as they started talking about it. Too much. And Rey Mysterio says it's one of his favorite matches. So even if you're not in it for like the trashy element of it having like daytime TV, Jerry Springer drama, he says it's his favorite. So like it's worth it for that if you like Rey Mysterio. Dang. Zero out of ten would not bang, but maybe someone out there will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can find Rachel on Instagram at uh, Garbage Pony Art. She has a ton of stuff for sale. She also has a website. There's a link in her bio that you can hit that has a ton of shit on it. So buy it. And are you currently available for commissions? Oh, yes. And it's garbage funny pop art. Hmm. Searching yes. under pop art. My apologize. My apologize. That's the only kind of art style I do. Uh, like realism picture of a chair. I don't have you. But if you want a picture of Simpsons, like, get at me. That's what I want to do. I want it to be a cartoon. If you want Bob's Burger Louise camo art, this is the place to go. Because <laughs> it was fantastic when I saw it. Oh, my God. So much collage stuff lately. I love how it looks so much. It's really good. Okay. And then you can find us at, on Instagram, it's... How to Talk Wrestling Pod. On Twitter, it's httw pod and then the fantastic email it's hell to pay management at gmail.com hell two is in the word to pay mgmt at gmail so check out everything go buy some art from rachel it's fantastic like us comment share do all the stuff yep. all right bye bye guys Beep.